on ESPN Classic. Joey, the last time I talked with you, we were kind of uh, talking about the old neighborhood days, and I remembered uh, you talking about your neighborhood. What a complete different um, place your area was than my little town of Brockton, Mass. Well, Rocky, I came probably the toughest neighborhood in the whole world because from my neighborhood, Edie became a murderer, or he became the judge. I mean, there was no in-betweens. And it was a golden era of sport. Of course, it was the, it was the day that uh, the lightweights probably had three or four hundred great contenders. And the heavyweight division had a uh, hundred, maybe. Well, uh, the, when I was fighting, Joey, we did have more activity in the heavyweight division. I know I fought twice a year and was always uh, uh, real sore because I couldn't fight more. Well, you I know, there are no fans, it. though, today for the fight. For instance, years ago, when I, when I worked with Tony Canzanieri, they loved him so much. That one time when I came to Chicago, I was playing a place called the Latin Quarter in Chicago, and it was probably the highlight of our career. Well, when the champ came on, the room was filled with the toughest guys in the history of Chicago. Every racket guy was there to see their champ. And of course, nobody else could get in because they had bought out the joint. Now, uh, Tony walked on stage to the greatest ovation since Franklin Delano Roosevelt at Madison Square Garden. Well, we got along pretty good when Tony said, men howled and cheered, kids screamed, women fainted. I said, what happened? He said, I forgot my tights. Did all the jokes, all the old gags, and it was going pretty good until one part in the act, I slapped Tony. You know, as you know, uh, Tony Canzanetti was hit by the toughest guys in the world. Nobody hurt him. But when I slapped Tony in the face, now, I'm not going to hurt you. I wouldn't hit you. But when you slap straight this way, it's going to hurt you. But when you slap off the face, it can hurt, and it's a theatrical gimmick. It's a way of doing it. Well, the audience, when they saw me slap their champ, well, there was such silence like you never heard in your life. When I walked off stage, Tony grabbed me and said, don't, don't leave me, they want to kill you. Wow. Did they As a matter of fact, they made me leave town in Detroit, the same kind of tough guys, because they said they couldn't see Tony get slapped. And Tony said, I'm making a living this way. They said, make a living someplace else. We don't want to see it. Joey, we, we've talked about uh, Tony Canzaner the last time, and there's so much interest in this this small fella now, how would you rate Kanzanieri in the all-time lightweights champions of the world? How would you rate him with them all? I think Tony was as great as anybody that ever lived in show business I, in, in the fight racket. I think uh, uh, Benny Leonard, Lou Tendler, uh, Ruby Goldstein, Sid Terrace, uh, all the great fighters, I think Tony was probably the greatest because Tony loved to train. He took very great pride very in being colorful. a great fighter, very and he was colorful. He could hit with either hand, and he had tiny little hands. Yes, he wore a woman's size uh, glove, I'm sure of that. That's right, but he hit like a man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that good. Just I can use him today because we have neighborhoods that you appeared with me for juvenile delinquency, to change juvenile delinquency to juvenile decency, where the kids would have idolized a guy like Tony, which they do you. Now, isn't it a funny thing that with all the great fighters around today and all the great champions, when I introduce you to these audiences, or Bonnie Ross, these kids remember and cheer and embrace you and ask you questions. And uh, we get an opportunity for you to use them uh, like you're probably the middleman for God for these kids because these kids look up the great sports figures, look up the actors. I think there are certain basic principles that kids must adhere to in order to become stars, whether it's in the sport world, whether it's in the entertainment world, whether it's in the musical world, whether it's in the business world. Now, for these kids that are watching your show, I think the greatest wonderful job you can do for them is to give them that kind of advice. Uh, Joey, my advice to the um, youngsters would be to uh, listen to their mother and fathers, um, probably a little bit more than I could. Uh, when I was on the road, being in the fight game, uh, I didn't have a mother and father handy, and so uh, little Charlie Goldman, my trainer, became uh, my mother and father. I was lucky enough to get a nice fellow like Charlie who gave me good advice and helped me. He uh, taught me all along the way. So I, I, what I want to say is to the kids is listen to your mother and father. They, they're the ones that like you. Don't fight them. I think the credo of show business is the example where the only barometer is character and talent, not the church or synagogue in which you worship or the color of your skin or the length of your beard. I know of no champion personally that wasn't a good, clean-living athlete. That's the bell for the main event, one of my own fights with Roland Lestazza. I was champion at this time, a rematch, second meeting. He gave me a shave the first time, and I couldn't forget it. This is a wiser Marciano you'll be seeing. Let me tell you about it as I fought it. 
the Polo Grounds, New York City, September 23rd, 1953. Here's Lestaza coming into the ring. This is my first New York Fighters champion, and it better be a good one. You can't make it big, even with the title, unless you go over big in New York. Lestaza looks serious. Three years ago, we had a close fight, and ever since then, he screamed for a rematch. He's got his hands high. His legs, his legs look real strong. He's backing away. He's gonna do a lot of that. Watch that right hand. He counters with it real good. Don't let that newspaper stuff fool you. He punches pretty good. guy's making me look terrible. He's two steps away from me all the time. Come on, close up that distance. He's up on his toes, moving good, too. This guy isn't fast, but he knows what he's doing. Settle down. You can miss him all night. picks off punches with his hands. If I can belt him on the arms, the hands will come down after a while. Right now, he's not fighting hard at all, just winning rounds and not even exerting himself. He's gonna be a tough guy later on, unless I can mess him up real fast. doesn't like it either. What am I doing wrong? Am I gonna blow everything? Jabs, moves away, jabs, ducks, moves away again. He'll have me crazy. I'm forgetting myself and throwing everything at his head. His hands are right up there waiting for me. The body, the body. Right hand hurt me. A real good shot. I've got to stay low for a second. I want to clear my head. The guy hurt me.
inside, get to the body. Now I'm thinking right. Ah, way low. Goldstein said he's going to take the round away because of that punch. Can I do anything right? Well, Joey, what do you think of me now? Uh, can I ask you a personal question? What is your profession? Fighter. I thought you were a ballet dancer. Uh, you know, there's a little thing in the rule book that says you are allowed to punch the uh, opponent. Uh, when are you going to get to him? Well, wait a minute. This is a big fight, Joey. It's a long one, and uh, we got about seven more rounds to go. Good luck to you. I get concerned parents asking, what can we do to help our children do better in school? My advice... He's not coming off the ropes. Can't lose my head. Stick to the body. Roland, that punch wasn't low, believe me. There, a big right. That should turn the fight. Now I've got to go. Got to make those people yell. Bring in that money. Start slugging. by La Staza, but he's staying near the ropes. Every time I see them coming up behind him, I feel good. He can't do anything good there. His best chance is in the middle of the ring. His body bent on that one. You're getting to him now. Keep swinging at him. He's right there. Let him... Right hand and hook. He's starting to feel it. Ah, the bell. They're talking to me different in the corner now. Nobody's yelling. Ali Colombo says the left hook is getting the job done. He's got a good eye. So let's throw more of those hooks. to get off the ropes. He turns to his right. That puts him in line for a left hook. He doesn't have that same look in his eyes either anymore. He's starting to act like maybe I got him in trouble. I 
fake that right, then got the hook in. The guy fell for it big. Try it again. The bell. Boy, do I feel better about things now. In the corner, Al Wilde says one thing. Knockout. Get the knockout. You can get rich when you flatten guys. Rollins cut in three or four places. His eyes are closing. But you just don't feel sorry for a guy when you're in there fighting him. This is too tough a business. Everything is going right. I'm punching real strong. What do you call this? Come on, Ruby. Let me go on and fight. Fighting can be a business of momentum. When you're moving good on a guy, you always seem to make the right moves. But the minute you start thinking about what you're doing or what you're gonna do, you can lose it all. Look at me now. I got up from that slip and I told myself, watch your balance. Don't look foolish. Those misses kill me. I've got to get the range. Got him on the ropes. He tries to get off, put my head on his chest and push him back. You can tell Lestazer is a top fighter. Look at him move. He's hurt, but he doesn't lose his head, stand still and slug it out foolishly. A lot of fighters make that mistake. Not rolling. Now all that training is helping me. The hottest part of a fight, the late rounds, and I'm breathing easy and evenly. The legs have plenty of spring in them. The gloves don't feel heavy at all. Nothing like being in condition. I'm gonna step up the pace on this guy. Keep him away, don't let him hang on. That's the punch, right hand underneath. and he falls back. His hands keep dropping. There! He's got to get up. Remember, don't let him get in the middle of the ring. Push him into the ropes. Don't let him breathe.
there you go. You got your knockout. One second you're a wild man throwing punches, then the referee stops it, and the next thing you're doing is talking to the guy you just tried to kill. But I feel great. At Burger King, we're always trying to make... Joey, about this fight, Roland Mastazzo and I had fought once before, and it was a real close fight. It was three years in between, and then I fought him again, fought the title here at the Polo Grounds. Mastazzo was a, probably the best defensive boxer in the heavyweight division. I knew you, uh, a lot of the fans, uh, thought you were avoiding Mastazzo in this particular fight, and I remembered or wanting to see it, but I was on a show business tour at the time, and I'm very proud of you, because until tonight, I never actually saw you knock him out. Joe, you've gone the long route to the top. I'd like for you to have this pair of golden gloves, my good luck charm. A little reminder that you've got to keep punching to get there, keep punching to stay there. My Rocky, this will uh, remind me to always keep punching, but not at you, of course. Thank you very much, Thank Rocky. Thank you, Joey.